Hello there, my fortifying friends, and welcome to the third part of my Rogaldorn Primarchs miniseries. In this episode, we will be getting right into the thick of it, it being the Horus Heresy. And I would like to tell you about Dorn's role in the defense of the Sol system, but especially his confrontation with the Alpha Legion, which culminated in the battle known as the Battle of Pluto. I feel obliged to let you know that this video will contain heavy spoilers regarding especially the novel Praetorian of Dorne, as well as the fate of one of the Primarchs and the actual ending of the heresy. So do consider yourself warned. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see what Rogel Dorne did, shall we? Before the Imperial Fists could arrive at Terra in full complement, the events of the Horus Heresy overtook them. Stranded for some considerable time by severe warp storms, the Imperial Fists fleet eventually discovered the badly damaged Loyalist Death Guard frigate, the Eisenstein, and so learned of Horus's betrayal. However, at first, Dorn didn't believe Captain Nathaniel Garrow and nearly killed him, when Garrow said that his brother Primarch Horus was a traitor to the Imperium and the Emperor. Rogel Dorn was eventually convinced by several members of the Eisenstein survivors of the Istvan Free Massacre, notably Captain Garrow, Yachtan Cruz of the Luna Wolves, and Remembrancer and later Imperial Saint Euphrates Keeler, that his brothers, Horus, Fulgrim, Mortarion, and Angron were staging a full-scale rebellion against the Emperor. Dorn therefore dispatched the bulk of his legion to the Istvan system on a war footing. He himself returned to Terra with his veteran space marine companies to bring word of the terrible events personally to the Emperor of Mankind. The bulk of the Imperial Fist's fleet would afterwards engage the Iron Warriors Legion in what would later become known as the Battle of the Fall System. Ironically, they were actually winning against Perturabo until a desperate astropathic message reached them. You see, in the meanwhile, Dorn had reached Terra and found out that Horus's rebellion wasn't limited to just the original four traitor legions, and that Istvan V had been a massacre. So Dorn ordered his retribution fleet, which was engaged with Perturabo's fleet, to return to Terra immediately. This might have been one of Dorn's biggest goofs, in my opinion, since the Imperial Fists, being the exemplars of duty that they were, they did indeed retreat from the battle with heavy casualties and limped back to Terra. An argument can be made that Dorn didn't have the complete picture when he ordered them back, since astropathic messages aren't exactly the same way as a radio. But who really knows what happened at that point? With its network of operatives and bondsmen, it is believed that even in the state of civil war that the Imperium had fallen into, the Alpha Legion had the means and opportunities to transfer material and personnel between sectors, including the Segmentum Solar and the strategically vital Sol system whose defenses had been entrusted to the Imperial Fists and their Primarch. Under the tireless efforts of the Imperial Fists, the Sol system had become a fortress, each strata of the solar system being turned into a perfectly organized defense zone to break the Arch-Douchebag Horus's eventual assault. Activating assets that had been dormant and hidden on Terra for several decades, the Alpha Legion would eventually succeed where all others had failed infiltrating several agents within the Imperial Palace and a place called the Investiary, where great statues had been erected to commemorate the Great Crusade's greatest generals, the Primarchs. The nine statues of the now traitor Primarchs have only been covered up at this point. This was the Alpha Legion's target. Infiltrated legionaries succeeded in penetrating the Investiary and destroyed all the statues, except two of them those of Alpharius and Rogel Dorn. Intended as both a challenge and a message, this feat was deliberately kept secret from other organizations within the Imperial Palace. 
even the regent of Terra, Malkador the Sigilite, and the emperor's own bodyguards, the Legio Custodes, were forbidden to enter the investiary and witness the shaming of the imperial fists. By what means the Sigilites still discovered the presence of the Alpha Legion on Terra was a mystery, but Rogel Dorn was adamant that he would deal with the treacherous 20th Legion in due course. Shortly after these acts of sabotage, an Alpha Legion fleet, led by Harrowmaster Kel Silonius, attacked the Sol System's outermost defenses, and managed to even capture several of Pluto's defense modes. These constituted the heart of the outermost defense perimeter. What really occurred there remains a well-guarded secret, and only kept by Rogel Dorn himself and his elite Hoskarl bodyguards. So let's see what happened in more detail. In order to prepare for Horus's advance towards Terra, the Alpha Legion was charged by the War Master to carry out vital acts of sabotage and preparation, which would plunge the solar system into complete chaos. Though heavily defended by the Imperial Fists Legion, led by the Praetorian of Terra himself, the Primarch Alpharius, aboard his flagship Alpha, led the fleet towards the Sol system. He managed to successfully infiltrate the outer defenses of the system by putting himself and the entirety of the personnel within his fleet into stasis. Meanwhile, the Alpha Legion fleet approached at minimum speed and powered down its vessels to the bare minimum, in order to reduce their overall heat signature. Thus, it took an entire standard year for the Alpha Legion fleet to drift towards the Sol system and successfully reached the outskirts of Terra's defenses undetected, as warp travel had been strictly forbidden. Meanwhile, Alpha Legion sleeper cells activated throughout the Sol system. These had been planted many years earlier, before the outbreak of the Horus Heresy, and upon activation, performed their functions of sowing destruction and terrorist attacks, causing panic and anarchy. Multiple acts of murder and sabotage were conducted on a number of planets to distract the beleaguered Imperial defenders from the Alpha Legion's real objective, Pluto. As Rogel Dorn was distracted by these diversionary attacks across the system, Alpharius's fleet, containing more than 200 vessels, struck Pluto and its moons, Charon, Kerberos, Nyx, Styx, and finally Hydra. Meanwhile, Archamus, Rogel Dorn's master of the Hoskarls, was eventually able to deduce the Alpha Legion's real intentions, to sabotage the Imperial Astropathic Monitoring Network centered on Hydra. During the fighting, Archamus led a Hoskarl contingent in a daring assault upon the Alpha Legion force led by Primarch Alpharius himself. In the subsequent fighting, the Hoskarls were killed and Archamus was left mortally wounded. Everything seemed lost, as the battle seemed to swing in favor of the traitor forces. But miraculously, the Imperial Fist's mobile star fortress, Phalanx, led by Rogel Dorn himself, arrived with a massive Imperial Fist's fleet in tow. These were boosted by additional reinforcements from the Armada Imperialis. Utilizing the competing gravity wells throughout the Sol system, the Imperial Fist's fleet managed to arrive quickly by slingshotting itself toward Pluto. The Loyalist fleet immediately pacified the captured guns on Kerberos, as Rogel Dorn led his Hoskarls in an assault upon the astropathic chamber on Hydra. Dorn and the remaining Hoskarls teleported directly into the locked chamber, and soon joined battle against Alpharius and his elite Lernian Terminators. Archamus looked on helplessly, as the two Primarchs fought one another in an epic life-or-death duel. When Alpharius was about to impale Dorn with his pale spear, the now dying Archamus grabbed the hilt of the weapon and deflected it harmlessly into a non-vital area of Dorn's chest. This gave Rogel Dorn the opening he needed to grab the weapon's hilt and using his deadly chainsword, called Storm's Teeth, he sliced through Alpharius' wrists, severing his hands from his arms before slashing his former brother across the chest and then impaling him with his own spear. Finally, Dorn finished off Alpharius with a deadly chop of his mighty chainsword into the top of his skull. 
With the death of their Primarch, the Alpha Legion fled with Drew and retreated from Pluto. Dorne was subsequently charged with bolstering the defenses of the Imperial Palace even further against the coming of the Traitor Legions, and oversaw the construction himself. Dorne constructed great bastions armed with millions of cannons, and added steel plating to the towers and walls of the palace. He felt he was marring the perfection and beauty of the existing structure in doing so, and regretted it deeply, even though it was necessary. His legion also struck out to Mars, securing vital weapons, armor and munitions from the loyalist Adeptus Mechanicus, even as the planet fell to the chaos-tainted Dark Mechanicum. The Imperial Fist's task force under the captain Camba Diaz took horrible casualties in the raid to secure these critical supplies. This material would later prove essential in holding off the siege of the Imperial Palace from the traitor marines. What forces of his legion Dorne had taken with him would fight in the Siege of Terra, manning the palace defenses with the Blood Angels Legion. When Horus dropped the shielding on his flagship, Dorne and his most trusted veterans, clad in the few remaining suits of Terminator armor, would teleport directly into battle with Horus on that ship. Unfortunately, Dorne and his chosen few would land furthest away from Horus, and had to fight their way across the entire length of the battle barge. This meant that they would arrive too late to participate in the battle with Horus himself. Dorne would be the one to find the bodies of the Emperor, the Blood Angel's Primarch Sanguinius, and Horus himself. He was also the one to take notes from the fatally crippled Emperor on how to rebuild the Imperium and personally carried his shattered father's body to the resting place in the golden throne of the Imperial Palace. Here, he would lie, neither alive nor dead, for the next ten millennia. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about Rogel Dorn and his actions during the heresy for today. I do apologize if it felt I glossed over the Siege of Terra, but since the Horus Heresy novels aren't actually there yet chronologically, we only have an overview of that battle for the time being. Also, this is not the last Dorn video. I will do at least one more where I will talk about what happened to him after the Heresy. Do you approve of Dorn's actions against the Alpha Legion? Would you have done anything differently? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video entertaining or informative? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for future content. I thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a peaceful day. The Emperor Protects.